huge round of applause, everybody, for Mechanic Grace and Ernie Hudson. Can you guys pull out your cell phones, turn on your flashlights, or any mechanic will have you stand right here? That's good, you're doing great? Check. You guys, McKenna's going to do it on her own personal cell phone, so you guys are going to be on it. So on the count of three, you guys are going to go nuts. Ready? One, two, three. Sound like you're at a golf tournament. Make some noise for Ernie Hudson and Thank you. I'm your moderator. My name is Jay Whitaker. Let's get started. First off, how was your day? How was your flight? How was everything? The flight for me was great. Um, the day has been great, and Salt Lake City is amazing, and so it's great to be here. All right, McKenna, how about you? On the contrary, I've had a terrible day, a terrible flight, a bad experience. No, I've had a great time. I've had a great flight. I had a very fun day getting to meet everyone. Okay, well, I have to make sure, because it's a Utah Rich night, make sure before you leave, you have to try fry sauce. Have you had fry sauce? Yes. Yes. It's, you just take some ketchup and some mayo, and you do this with your finger, and you try it. It's a Utah thing. You just have it. Enjoy it, okay? Put it on fries, get you some funeral potatoes, you'll, be, you'll, you'll love it. You'll welcome to Salt Lake City. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I knew something was missing. That has to be it. <laughs> so let, let's get right into it. We know why we're here. What, what do we want to talk about? We know we want to talk about some Ghostbusters. We know we want to talk about some Handmaid's Tale. We, want, we just want to talk about, I want to talk to you about Oz for a minute. So there's a lot of things. I'm so happy and proud of y'all. Thank First of all, round of applause again just for them for making it out here. You know, I'm so impressed that so many of you guys are here. This is beautiful I mean, it's, and surprising. So thank you for showing up and showing out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So now, McKenna, Hi. you play Young Phoebe, which is like also a dope rap name, by the way. Young Phoebe is a dope rap name. But what was it like just jumping into that role with, the, with Ghostbusters? Obviously, it's been around for so long. And what, it, what, what was it like just being on set for the first time? Um, well, we were just laughing about this a second ago because we had to do photo ops together. Yeah. But then after our photo ops together, it was his solo photo ops, but I was like, can I take a picture too? Can I have a picture to put on my wall? Because I, um, I mean, Ghostbusters was something that I grew up with. It was a really big part of my childhood. So it was very surreal to get to audition for, much less to get to be a part of, is still mind-boggling to me. It's very cool. I'm a very, I'm a really big fan. It's so weird to me. I, um, whenever I was younger, my best friend growing up went to a Comic Con and met Ernie and took a picture with him. And I was so mad because I was so jealous. And I was like, I cannot believe you got to meet him. And then now I get to meet him. And now you're just here. <laughs> so weird. Signing autographs, doing yeah, photo ops with crazy. him and on a panel. Yeah, this is awesome. It's insane. And now, uh, Ernie, like, uh, first of all, thank you uh, as, as, as a young as a young brother from LA, uh, I, during Halloween, guess who I was dressing up as? You, sir. So, so I appreciate it. Uh, just like I, I, I remember, I remember having the uh, Ghostbusters uh, on our own, Bobby Brown on cassette. Yeah, I'm dating myself, but I, that was my jam. And so, uh, how have, how have you? Uh, this franchise is very important to a lot of people. It's iconic. How, how have you maintained that longevity? Yeah, you know, it's uh, the great thing about Ghostbusters for me, it, it sort of crosses generations. And I meet so many people who over the past 40 years have stories about how the movie has impacted their, their lives, their families. Uh, people would say it's the first movie they saw in the theater or the first movie they saw with their fathers or their mothers. And uh, it's just very, very touching. And when I go um, anywhere, you know, even out of the country, guys will show up with their jumpsuits and their backpacks and 
and it's just nice to, I've been an actor for almost 60 years, and it's nice to have a film that, you know, that is, um, that has that kind of longevity, and I, I was concerned before we did um, um, uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife, uh, until I got on the set and met McKenna, and uh, the, you know, Paul Rudd, and just the, the new cast, and I knew that the franchise is in great hands, so, I'm just uh, just very very proud to uh, to be a part of this and to and that you guys you know like the movie. I mean, it's just very very special. So I gotta ask because I have to. Y'all believe ghosts is real? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like honestly, just be real. Yeah, I, I believe ghosts are real. You got a ghost story? Um, well, see, I believe ghosts are real, but I don't believe ghosts can cross into this dimension. And uh, I believe they're real and they're in our heads. And I believe in possessions. I believe you can be possessed by a ghost and it'll have you doing funky, nasty things. <laughs> and, and, and you'll be wondering, why did I do that? And, and your families will be saying, oh my God, I can't believe he's doing that. And I think those are things that, I think they're those thoughts that you have to always be mindful of. So it's that energy that's out there that never goes away. And, um, and I think that's how it impacts our lives. Um, I mean, I believe in like spirits and demons and I, I know that there's something out there. I don't know if it's in the same capacity of like the ghosts and ghostbusters, yeah. but I, I, I feel like there's something out there. Like there's gotta be. So, what was it like just being on set? Like, who, did anybody, who scares the easiest? <laughs> You're already laughing, so I know there's, a, I know there's somebody. <laughs> I don't know, you know, the, you guys are, you know, sort of newer to it, so. Jeez. Um, I don't know, I feel like everybody's pretty good. I'm trying to think if I've like hidden around a corner and scared someone on set, because I'm sure I have. <laughs> Well, well, Danny Aykroyd definitely believes in ghosts and believes in, you know, all that yeah. stuff that sort of came out of his mind. So um, he's definitely sensitive to weird things and weird going on. So he, he's totally... more excited than scared. And he's excited. Yeah, not, not scared, but, but can you believe? <laughs> yeah, Danny, I couldn't believe. It's okay. So, yeah, I would say Danny would be the one to Right on. So, for, for both of you, now this question goes to both of you. Um, your experience in acting, obviously, you said you've had over 60 years of, uh, in working in, in acting and film. What advice would you give to any actors out there? And McKenna's the same question to you. Obviously, you don't have 60 years, but what advice would you give to young actors out there that are aspiring to be on the stage, be on the silver screen? Well, I'd, I'd be interested in hearing McKenna's answer because she's from a whole new generation, right. probably about, <laughs> I don't know, about, it's probably about 50 years between our, or more, <laughs> she was. Uh, between our ages, so I'm kind of curious as to, and then I'll say what, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well I was excited to like sit here and like listen and learn what I could. <laughs> um, geez, I may not have been acting for 60 years, but I have been for about 13 now, so still, still a second, but I don't know, for me that's always such a hard question because I think there's so much advice that you can give to somebody, but it's such a weird industry whenever you really get into it. Nothing can really prepare you for it until you're in it. Um, but for me and my experience, I think that it can be a very discouraging industry and a very discouraging profession because there's so many constant no's. And I think that Comparison in any regard is going to kill all of us just because it's like the worst But all you see in acting is all of the yeses and everybody else's success But behind closed doors, there's so many just doors slammed in your face so many no's 24 7 every day, so I think that it's truly just about trying to learn how to have thick skin and to roll with the punches and just to not get discouraged is my biggest thing that I'm also trying to learn myself right. is not getting discouraged because there's a lot of no's in the industry. Rejection is redirection. And so, yeah, it's like you have to say, you, you will hear a thousand no's. A lot of people think it's luck, but it's some, some of it's a little bit luck, but it's also proper preparation and being ready for that moment and being ready for that audition. Yeah. And you go out and kill it and next thing you know, 
There you are, we're watching you on the silver screen, and I love that. So great answer, thank you so much. Yeah. Ernie? Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with everything you said, but I think that, um, for me, coming from um, a small town in Michigan, where I, I never know anybody who, in any way, was connected to the industry, and making up my mind that I was gonna be an actor, and hearing everyone say that it was impossible and that you can't make it, or that you must know someone who can get you, all the stuff that you hear. I always believe that there is, we talked about ghosts earlier, I believe just like they're negative spirits, I believe they're positive spirits, and I believe that we're, we have this energy that will guide us and direct us to the thing that we're led to. I think if you get a feeling that it's something you want to do very, then that's, that's something that's calling you. And I think you have to trust the universe. Uh, the, the Bible talks about putting out your trust in man. I don't think, coming to Hollywood, I never met anyone who sort of opened the door for me. Um, but I met a lot of people who were willing to help. I think, I think we're guided to that. So my advice is to trust your inner spirit, trust your guide, trust, you know, and do the work, do the work um, before you have the opportunity. You know, if you know you're doing it, prepare yourself so when that opportunity comes, um, there's not a second chance, you step into the room, but you have to prepare for, it's almost like the, the story in the Bible about the, you know, the brides who are waiting for the groom, and, um, and most of them fell asleep or their candles burned out, but the one who was prepared. So you've got to be ready for that opportunity. But if you're called, and I believe it's a calling, um, I believe that we all have everything we need to be successful, but it's hard for most of us to believe and trust in that. And if you're called to whatever, that's your joy, that's your that's your success, and follow that. Trust, but trust your heart, because parents don't know what you're here to do. They have an opinion, but in your heart, deep down, you know, and you need to trust that inner guide, because it will guide you, and it will not fail you, but you, if you doubt yourself, you won't follow it. So trust yourself. Well said from both of you. Um, as far as, now I know we, we all know acting is, is your passion. Are there any other creative projects? I mean, I know music, uh, art, what, are, what else are you, are, are you both working on that nurtures your creative process? Well, you know, I'm, I'm so impressed with McKenna because she, <laughs> she has music and she, doing everything. She, you know, she does everything. And, uh, and I feel a bit lazy because uh, <laughs> I'm just an actor. I mean, I, I started out, um, thinking of myself as a writer. And I wake up in the morning, I said, I should be writing. I should actually, if some people want me to produce this thing, I should do that. I was like, nah, just, you know, I'm an actor. That's all I do. That's all I want to do. Now, the fact that I'm almost 80 years old, that probably has something to do with, um, I think the spirit of, um, of old age, people, you know, it's a spirit and, and it, it just makes you slow down, it's very soft. It says to you very softly, you don't really want to get up, just sit there. <laughs> um, why don't you take a nap? And you say, Wayne, I should be writing a script. And I say, no, just take a nap. And little by little, you'll just slow down until you really can't move for real. So uh, I'm kind of lazy, that's all I do. I'm just an actor and, um, but, um, but, you know, we're at totally different generations, and I'm inspired by just <laughs> just everything you do, and it's just beautiful to see. First, okay, I'm so yeah. First of all, Ernie, I'm so sorry, but I refuse to call you lazy because, sir, you are per you are approaching 80, and you look fantastic. <laughs> like, absolutely fantastic. Like, black don't crack, it clearly chisels, okay? <laughs> you look great, sir. Well, they say black don't crack, but I say on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I felt that one. <laughs> on the inside, high blood pressure, all that stuff, heart disease, they, you go down the list and we're at the top of it. But we look good. It's, oh my God, he's, he's dead, but he looks so good. <laughs>
so, but thank you. And we came up with the same, same question to you. Um, <laughs> I, sorry, that was a really being compliment. I'm like, oh wow, that's so sick. Um, I, I act, I actually just played, I play music, I just played a show, what day is it? It's Thursday, I played a show on Tuesday night in Nashville that was really cool. I played music and then I flew here and now I'm getting to meet everybody, so it's so fun. But yeah, I yep. music, I write, all sorts of things. Everybody follow her on Spotify right now. Do it. Let's get those follows. <laughs> Stream that right now. Thanks. Is there any projects that we can uh, look forward to that we can listen to immediately or on, on the way home? Uh, musically, there's. I have a lot of music out. So I actually did my first song that ever came out was in the end credits of Ghostbusters Afterlife. It was called Haunted House. So that one's fun. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Woo! Now, I do have Ernie. I, I gotta ask you. How do you how do you take care of yourself? Let's get that workout plan. Let's get that diet plan. You know, there's a lot of people that want to know. Yeah, you know, people do ask me uh, that a lot, and, um, you know, I say, just don't be stupid. <laughs> you know, they say, well, I gotta get in shape, and I said, well, the reason you're not in shape because you're probably pretty stupid. <laughs> you know you should've got up, you should've walked, and you didn't get up, you sat down on that couch. And you know when you had that little bit of ice cream at night, you ate the whole thing. <laughs> like, come on, now, you know what I mean, you're gonna have a drink, and drink the whole bottle. And now you wonder why your skin looks a little messed up and why your eyes are red. Come on, man, just don't do the stupid stuff. Now, we all will have our moments. Just can't have a moment every day. <laughs> so just be nice to yourself. Love yeah. yourself and, and just be kind to yourself. That's, that's my, you know. And, um, and, all, and also try to find the love. I've been married 50 years. And sometimes, sometimes, a lot of times I have to say, Find the love. I know I love this woman. What, what is it that I love? <laughs> I know there's some love in here somewhere, so I gotta find it. So yeah, so find the love. Focus on the love, because the thing that really piss you off, there's a lot of it out there. Don't focus on it, though. Let it go. Let it go. I love that. You can't any love advice? Any love advice? Yeah, any love advice. Can somebody give me some love advice, please? <laughs> Thank you. I'm just listening to them and I'm like, oh man, lucky. <laughs> No, that's cool. Now, I, I know there's some great people over here that want to ask some questions. I do want to open that, uh, open the floor up for questions. Uh, let me, we have our first panelist right here, our first question right here. Hey, hey how you doing? Speaking of that mic, don't be afraid. Ghostbusters did we like to make the most? I feel like I'll let you answer that one since you... So which one of the Ghostbusters did you like to make the most? Since oh, you've which one been around for all of them. Oh, I thought you meant the people. Oh. <laughs> 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 no, the movies. Um, I think um, it would have to be the first Ghostbusters and Afterlife. I really, really loved doing Afterlife. It was great coming back together. <laughs> Thank you, great question. Who's next? Who's next? Who's next? Who's next? Who's next? All right, who's next? Where's our... There we go. How you doing? Hi, I'm Erica, and I just want to say I'm a true believer of the supernatural as well. And uh, my question is, what was the most memorable moment on the set of Ghostbusters, you know, for the both of you? For me, I feel like one of my most memorable moments, of course, is being on set and all the memories I made there. But for me, uh, probably my favorite memory of getting to be a part of Ghostbusters was before I was a part of it, was whenever I got to do the chemistry reads, was because they brought me in and I was so determined to play it cool. I was like, okay, I'm gonna play this so cool. I'm gonna go in and be so professional. And I walked in and Ivan and Jason Reitman were both there. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna play this cool. And then they brought out a proton pack for me to put on, and I cried. <laughs> and then I cried, and then I let it spill out, and I cried. And I was like such a, I was like geeking out, and I was so excited. 
but that was like the first time that I ever met Ivan, and that was so special to me, and I, I got to put on a proton pack for the first time, so that's my favorite memory, because I cried. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the most memorable moment, I, I you know, I, I sit there and I'm trying to, yeah. I think Sigourney Weaver wrote a poem about Ghostbusters, just, she just wrote this poem. And I remember uh, it was in the very beginning of the first movie and we'd only worked together for a few days. And so she started this poem and um, it was, it was kind of cool and she mentioned Bill and Danny and Harold and I sat there thinking, um, she's probably not going to mention me. So the poem was going on. And then she mentioned me. And I was like, oh, wow, this is so nice. Oh, it's so good. Like, I'm a part of it. And, uh, and I know I made more out of it than I, but I still remember going, wow, I'm included. I'm a part of the Ghostbusters, too. <laughs> so that, uh, that still, nobody else saw it, but it was, it was that moment. Real quick, how heavy are those proton packs? Just, just out of curiosity. They are heavy. Yeah, I'd say probably about 40 to 50 pounds. You know, I've seen uh, you guys make, or fans make backpacks, they make them out of really light material and they look amazing, but somehow the studio never quite got the look the message. <laughs> It's really, they're really kind of heavy. And, uh, well, no, because it's like you think that it might be because of all the electronics, but no, people come up and they have fully functioning yeah, proton packs that smoke and smell like marshmallows. Yeah, no. <laughs> and the top doors are breaking and they're still like 50 pounds. <laughs> it's true, they're very heavy, unnecessarily so. <laughs> That's why you're in good shape. That's what it is. You've been lifting proton packs for 30 years. Yeah, no, and I see, uh, you know, I mean, the young guys, they have no problem. I see Bill and Danny and you know, they're sort of struggling, and oh, no. me too, but I refuse to show it. I'm like, have a trouble, Danny? I'm, I'm doing pretty good with mine. But, uh, yeah, no, they're really heavy for some stupid reason. I want to get to you right here, right here. Okay, my question is more towards McKenna, unless Ernie's dropping beats we don't know about. It's <laughs> about McKenna's music. But, um, are you planning on producing any new music or putting your music on, like, a vinyl or CD for your fans to buy? I would love to. I think that it's also just like a matter of like I'm trying to, I want my music to do well enough to be able to make CDs or vinyls or to go on tour or things like that, but I am definitely, I have over like a hundred demos on my phone. I have written like 20 songs over the past two weeks. I have been grinding out the music, but I just have not released most of it. So I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to put out some more music soon, hopefully. <laughs> songs in the last two weeks? Listen, man. <laughs> Listen, I... Heartbreak, okay? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Break it up. <laughs> it's rough. It's okay, what? It's okay. Oh, I put it in okay. the music. <laughs> Find the love. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Hi, um, my question is also directed to you, McKenna. Um, I know you were on Fuller House. What was it like working with... So what was it like working with the crew and the cast and just being part of that next generation? Well, that was so cool as well because that was also something that I was such a big fan of, just like Ghostbusters, I remember. Um, because I came into Fuller House, I think, in the second season, and my mom and I, we had binge-watched all of the first season the day that it dropped. Her and I spent the day um, in her room, and I went and crawled up in her bed, and we binge-watched the entire first season of Fuller House because her and I had watched all of Full House over the summer. So it was such a big deal to me to get to be a part of it. And everybody there was so nice, just like everybody on Ghostbusters. They were so lovely and so fun, and it really became like a family, because I was on there for a couple seasons, so it was so fun. Good question. Good question. So the last question was kind of on a, a spiritual side of, of believing in ghosts. I want to know if either of you have ever had a spooky or scary encounter, maybe working on the set or at home, and thought, hey, who am I going to call? <laughs> no plague. Yeah, I, I know, I grew up in a family that believed in ghosts and saw things that they couldn't explain. My grandmother definitely believed in ghosts and believed she was visited by my mom, who passed when I was three months old, so... 
Uh, yeah, I've seen things in my life that I can't explain, but um, I think I've sort of got past the fear of that um, when I realized that all the mass shootings, they weren't done by ghosts. Um, so they probably can't pick up a gun and shoot anybody. So, uh, so I don't have a fear of it, but I definitely believe that things that we can rationalize. Um, in fact, we, there was a, a, a place where they televised this thing. Um, I was invited to come to Greer, Arizona, uh, a haunted hotel, and spend the night oh. because there was <laughs> there was this ghost. Yeah, I'm with that, you. Um, I would not be doing that. <laughs> young man who um, had been uh, killed in this hotel and he haunted. And so when people would go there, sheep were ripped off their beds and it's just kind of crazy stuff. And people would leave in the middle of the night. And they were paying me money, so I thought, okay, I mean, you know, there's a steady paycheck in it. I believe anything you say. So, <laughs> so we, we went to Greer, Arizona, and um, my wife, my son, and some friends, we thought it would be kind of fun. And about three o'clock in the morning, um, I woke up, my son was in, one bed, my wife and I was you know, in, in the other bed, but there was a, it was like a light that was, it was like an orb that was floating over my son's bed. And it was, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this and it was just, and so I, I woke my wife and I said, you know, just don't, but do you see anything? And she said, oh my God, there's something, whatever. So I said, no, no, it's so, and, then, and then he woke up and said, what? And then the orb just sort of floated down to the door. And when it got to the door, it was like the, it turned black, and it was this black, like you can see where the light comes through the crack of the door. Well, it was like it would block out parts, you know. And so I turned the light on, and there was nothing there. And then we just totally panicked. The only reason I, um, I, so we actually ran, left the room when we ran. There was a room upstairs on the third floor that they were going to be monitoring with these infrared lights. And so we thought we'd go up there and tell them. But when we got up to this room, we, we, oh, the door wasn't locked and we opened the door and this cold breeze sort of blew through and, and we just ran down the hall, kind of screaming. <laughs> so we went back to the room, we kind of huddled together and waited for the morning to come. The next morning they had a radio station that was saying, well, were there any unusual events that happened? Um, I feel like I'm not telling this story very well, but, um, and so I was going to speak up and this guy says, no, no, I, I something happened and I, he wanted to tell his first, and he said he, he was staying in this room where they were monitoring and everybody fell asleep and then he woke up and the door opened <laughs> and he said, I heard the most ghastly sound of, oh, <laughs> It was these sounds and these screams and it was like floating down the hallway. <laughs> and it was, it was, and I was like, it was us, we were the ones right now. <laughs> so, uh, but the only reason I, I bring that up because, you know, when you see something by yourself, you think, well, maybe I didn't see that, maybe that wasn't real. But the fact that all three of us sort of experienced it, it made it. So, um, this, the ghost stories, they, did a story about that, it was on TV, and um, anyway, so yeah, but so I've had a few things that kind of weird. That happened and you don't believe in ghosts? <laughs> well, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, I'm not quite sure, I believe, but I do believe ghosts affect our thoughts. I think that's more, that's more likely to, to happen, you know, I think of possession, but more than, you know, not like, you know, ghosts are gonna come and rip the hole in a wall or something. <laughs> So scary. What about you? Me? Oh, oh, ghost story. I was so like enthralled. Um, gee, boy, it's nothing like that. Uh, you just stay in a freaky, spooky Airbnb or nothing no, like that? No, I'm not gonna stay in a spooky, freaky <laughs> Airbnb. Um, uh, jeepers, I'm really trying to think. I'm like racking my brain. I did one of the Annabelle films, and I can't tell if it was that everybody was on edge during shooting because literally the first day. Um, they had like an actual priest come and bless the set and throw holy water on everything and so everybody was super on edge as if like Annabelle was going to come after us 
So I feel like a bunch of scary stuff happened down there, but I can't tell if it was just like us getting in our heads or if it was actually like Annabelle. <laughs> but whoa. <laughs> yeah. and, and also, so, you know, I have friends who will, you know, <laughs> getting close to death, and you say, "Listen, don't, don't try to come back and." <laughs> Please, just, you know, I mean, wait for me on the other side. I don't need to show up. My wife, if you die, I'll miss you, but don't show up on our bedroom. <laughs> I don't want to see a ghost. I don't, I don't want the experience. Thank you very much. I'm, uh, I'm good. Real quick, um, just briefly moving away from the Ghostbusters for a second. I know you both had more emotional roles. Uh, I want to talk about Handmaid's Tale and, and, and the Gifted, and as well as uh, you playing Ward and Glenn and, and, and Oz. How do you prepare for such? Like I know Ghostbusters, it's, it's silly, it's spooky, but how would you? What's what's the difference? I mean, has there been a difference in preparing for more dramatic and emotional roles? What's that been like for you? Well, yeah, no, it's, it's all you know. Every character is different. I think every character has a certain rhythm. We all have a different kind of energy, a different sort of rhythm. I think when you can, um, you you work hard to sort of find that that thing, you know, that makes it uniquely individual. And when you find it, it's like you can't do any wrong because you you're there. And sometimes, unfortunately, you can't always find it. But um, but yeah, no, it's you know you kind of for me, everybody's different. But for me, you research and you study and you go through it and you, to, to get to that place, but once you, when I finally found the character in the Hand of Rocks the Cradle, it's like, it, it, it's just a place you, you have to, you know when you're there, but, um, you know, and uh, Oz was very different because it was a prison. And, very different. You know, and they had, the, some of the guys who had actually served time and, um, yeah, but every, every one is, is sort of different. I, well, I feel like it really just depends on what you're playing or who you're playing, but for me, I find that my through line and preparing for something as uh, music, I find that I'll make a different playlist for most of the characters that I play, and I find that music is really instrumental for me in tapping into like feeling sad or feeling different emotions, because I think that, um, for me at least, music can bring a lot of emotions to the surface and it can really hit like close to my heart uh, so I guess I make different playlists that help me get into a character which I feel like sometimes is silly but it really helps me. Well playlist five so I gotta ask a question for my, my, my good friend Jimmy Martin who's not no longer here with us but what is your go-to favorite karaoke song? I gotta ask because you brought up music so he would always ask a guest that on this stage so I have to ask that question to you both of y'all. What? That's a good one. Uh, for me, I think that it's either like, I have three. I have okay. Hopelessly Devoted, okay. Before He Cheats, and You Oughta Know by Alanis Morissette. So okay, those are like my three go-tos. I'm very interested. No, uh, probably my way. Usher? Mm. Oh no. <laughs> Frank Sinatra, I'm teasing. Uh, I was 78 years old. I just wanted to guess. It was a shot in the dark, okay? Just wanted to guess. Ursher, baby. Yeah, yeah, no. Usher. You know, yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's, the people that I have on my playlist have been dead a long time. <laughs> and I don't want a visitation from many of them. <laughs> my friend over here. Hi, uh, just for, so first of all, this, thank you so much uh, for coming down here, and of course, uh, thank you guys for your performances, not only just in Ghostbusters, but the, the other things I've seen you both in, like you, for, for Mr. Hudson, of course, I enjoyed hearing your voice in Transformers Prime, the show, I liked watching that, and I, I loved your performance, we kind of gifted, and it's very but, So my question is, when you guys are just, you know, relaxing, and, you know, just, Maybe you decided probably to watch a movie. What, what was like some film you loved watching, probably growing up, or like probably something recent that you just enjoyed, like watching and, and having a good time? I loved Ghostbusters growing up. <laughs> I really liked Ghostbusters and Scream has always been like my all time favorite film and. Ratatouille and Tangled and like Romeo and Juliet, those are always like my go-to's, my comfort films. 
Yeah, um, um, you know, I don't know. Um, it's a wonderful life. I, 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 I like it. Yeah. Because I think as a kid, movies would be, you know, you learn from your neighbors and your parents, but you learn a lot about the greater world from watching movies and stuff. So I watched a lot of films, but I've always liked movies that sort of were, you know, just kind of nice fun movies. I don't watch a lot of stuff now. I, I watch stuff with, my wife watches stuff, so I'll sit there to spend time, you know, like, why are you looking at that? And then just, she'll say, what do you want to watch? And I'll go, I don't know, but I, I shouldn't be looking at that. <laughs> so, I, so I, you know, I don't know. I, I, um, you know, when I was a kid, it was the Westerns, you know, so, um, you know, High Noon, and you know, that's how you, you be a man. You love your horse more than your family, but uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I love movies and TV stuff, but I, I don't know. But except I, I, every year I watch is a wonderful life. So. My young friend right here. So we all know that Finn Wolfhard was in Stranger Things. <laughs> Was it difficult working with him? It was difficult working with him. <laughs> <laughs> and what was your least favorite scene to do with him? My least favorite scene to do with him? Me? For both of you. Okay. Well, you Every both scene both. with Finn Wolfhard was my least favorite scene to do with him. <laughs> um, I don't know. I always had fun with Finn. Um, what did I hate shooting with him? <laughs> Uh, you know what? I always have a really good time with Finn, but, um, the first week of shooting The Last Frozen Empire was so difficult, and it wasn't because of either of us or any of the cast, but it was literally for a week straight just us on a green screen in the car shooting the same scene every day for like 15 hours for seven days, so it was... We were all going insane by the end of it. It was the car chase scene at the beginning of Frozen Empire, was what we started with. Um, and we all went a little stir crazy, but it was all also really nice to all be together again. So we always have fun together. <laughs> yeah, no, he's just a great, great guy. He's so fun. I, I said, a lot of fun working with him. I was sort of teasing because on Stranger Things, they had a Ghostbuster episode. <laughs> and, uh, and the black kid on the show, they were going to make him Winston. And he didn't want to be once. You're like, why, why am I Winston? How come I gotta be Winston? <laughs> and when I met him, the pipe was felt so bad. He said, I, I didn't want to. I, I didn't want to say that. I'm like, dude, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, my young friend right here. Uh, uh, hi. Um, let me say it's an honor to be meeting you guys or just speaking to you. Um, my question to you is. What is your favorite Pokemon or cartoon character? I was gonna say, are you dressed as Mimikyu? Yes. I like Mimikyu. I personally, I love Pokemon. I love Pokemon so much. I have like four binders inside of my um, like drawer in my bedroom and they're like divided by rarity. I, I like eBay card, like I'm into it. Um, I like Dragonair, that's my favorite Pokemon. What's your favorite Pokemon? Well, remember, yeah. yeah, what's your favorite Pokemon, man? <laughs> what was it, Charizard? Or it was, I, I spent like $375 when it was cards when I was a kid. No. But yeah, when Pokemon first came out, you couldn't find certain ones, and so I spent a ton of money on <laughs> Pokemon cards. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, no, I, it's, uh, my favorite cartoon was Mighty Mox. Yes! What are we doing over here? Uh, who is your favorite person to film with? My favorite person to film with. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> excluding you, because you would be my obvious answer, always. <laughs> Out of the Ghostbusters cast? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go out of the Ghostbusters cast. I really enjoyed shooting with Dan, just because he and I got to have a lot of um, stuff together this go around. We also got to have a lot of stuff together this go around, which I had a lot of fun with. I don't know. Um, 
I just think that it's it's always really fun working with Dan because I personally love listening to like his ghost stories and his alien stories because they're so like intricate and and like I love them. Um, and he's always really just like brings a lot of joy and is always excited to like, be on set. It's always just nice to work with him. Yeah, I um, you know what. I work with Betty Davis, and uh, I was so uh, just impressed, thankful, so cool, and just got to Hollywood. And uh, and she complimented me at the end of our singing, and so that was uh, yeah, that was kind of my favorite person. Her and Ricardo Montalban, I did uh, Fantasy Island, and. Uh, I was in my dressing room because we had all these television stars on the show, and I was, you know, I was just kind of starting out. And I was a little bit uncomfortable, so I was going to have my lunch in my trailer, and I was a knock on the door, and it was Ricardo, and he said, "Welcome, me, welcome me," and uh, took me around and introduced me to all the cast, and he got my lunch, and he sat there and had lunch with me. And, uh, and I thought, wow, he didn't have to do that. Whatever someone is, you know, they're nice, but you know they don't have to do that. And he sort of went out of his way to make me feel just a part of the show. And I always thought if I ever get a show of my own, I would always remember that. And, uh, and he was so nice that I saw him about four months before he died and he pretended he remembered me. Uh, I don't know if he actually did, but it was nice of him to say that. And uh, so he was very, very special. We've got time for two more. That's all right. I'm very sorry we have time for two more, but a lightning round real quick. My friend right here. Ready? Okay, first of all, it's an honor to meet you guys. Oh, and so question to you. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. There okay, we, we can hear you. To you guys is what? Oh, there was hold on, hold on. Just take my mic. Yeah. Whoa. That's cool. Given your guys' personal experiences with the movie, what do you guys think it takes to be a Ghostbuster? First, can't be afraid of no ghosts. <laughs> That's what we heard. That's good. That's a, that a perfect. Can I side with That's you? a perfect answer. <laughs> we got time for one last one. Here we go. Hi. Um. So Congo. I think your character was the best part of that whole movie. I loved it, and I think the world needed a spin-off with Captain Monroe Kelly. Was that ever considered to do a spin-off with that character? Well, yeah, it was considered a lot by me, only me. <laughs> Not by the studio, apparently, but uh, it was so much fun. And thank you so much, because it was one of the, probably the, well, I, I had so much fun with that character, with that movie, and uh, I would have liked to have seen the spin-off, but, uh, you know, that, that didn't happen. But, uh, but thank you, it really means a lot, yeah. Cut him a check, cut him a check. <laughs> this is our last one. I see you can wait very patiently. I appreciate y'all just for hanging out. Of course. Okay. What's your name? My name is Kennedy, and um, my question is to McKenna Grace. So, were you and Finn um, good buddies while making Ghostbusters Afterlife? No, we hated each other. <laughs> Every day was terrible. Yeah, of course. I um, It was always really nice, especially on Frozen Empire. It was really nice because whenever I started off in Ghostbusters, I had just turned 13. And I don't know how old Ben was. He must have been like 15 or 16. But, you know, Logan and I had each other. But it's been nice now that I've been older. And just like we all get to be friends and like hang out. And Ben is like... Like I love them. Yeah, we were we had a blast, especially on the last one and on the press tour. Yeah, <laughs> Finn and I had a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, you were 13. Yeah, and I literally Jason Reitman came to my Jason Reitman and Logan came to my 13th birthday party. 
<laughs> and Logan did the worm on the dance floor. <laughs> I just thought that was important. <laughs> Ernie, can you do the worm? Sorry, what? Can you still do the worm? Uh, I'm starting to feel like the worm. <laughs> Well, that's all the time that we have for. Please give a round of applause for McKenna Grace and Ernie Hudson. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, McKenna.